Ladies and gentlemen, uh, when Gray Thornton asked me to MC this evening, he also asked me if I would say a few brief words with respect to conservation to all of you. He only wants me to speak for five or six minutes or so, and I told Gray that some of my pauses are longer than that. But at any rate, we will do what we can. I do believe that on a conservation evening, it is worthwhile for us to consider the very word conservation itself. There have been many debates in recent years about this word, about who owns it, about who may have stolen it, about what its original intention was, and what its ongoing relevance might be. Well, I can assure you that those nuances, those petty discussions, were not part of what inspired Theodore Roosevelt and John Muir and Gifford Pinchot and George Bird Grinnell to lay the foundations for the activities and the institutions that make this evening possible. In fact, they were driven by something quite different than a debate over what the word itself would mean. What they were driven by, ladies and gentlemen, was love. They were driven by a love of country, they were driven by a love of wildlife, and they were driven by a love of wild places. The very things that are supposed to be, and indeed are, the essence of the Wild Sheep Foundation. Love of country, love of wildlife, and love of wild places. We cannot change the nature of man, ladies and gentlemen, but we surely can change the nature within each and every one of us. Wildlife today faces threats that are far beyond even what Roosevelt and Grinnell imagined. All over the world, these amazing creatures are disappearing before our eyes. And we need every single ounce of power and passion and persuasion and commitment to hold back that tide of loss. If you want to imagine a world in which you no longer wish to live, then you imagine a world where wildlife does not exist. For that is a world without beauty, that is a world without peace, and that is a world that will not sustain them or us into the future. I have long dreamed, as my very good friends in this audience, such as Gray Thornton and Keith Balfour know, of a wildlife necklace, a conservation necklace that would join all parties and all viewpoints who have an interest in the conservation of nature together. Some people, perhaps some in this audience, dismiss this as an impossibility. But it is not impossible. It is entirely possible. Because when we reach for the best in us, we can become the best together and do the greatest things that this world is ready to witness. Inspiration is what it takes, ladies and gentlemen. And the inspiration that was brought to the crisis of wildlife loss at the turn of the century, 100 years ago, mostly by people in the United States of America, has inspired your nation and the nations of Canada and, na and the nation of Canada and nations around the world for over 120 years. That is what inspiration means. That is what having the courage to do the right thing means. We stand today at a time when the very best in ourselves must be called forward, not only for wild sheep, but for all wildlife on this planet. I am deeply proud of what the Wild Sheep Foundation has accomplished already. And what you have accomplished already is monumental. But I am here today to challenge you, the Wild Sheep Foundation, to have achievements into the future that will be legendary and that no one will ever forget or be able to dismiss. Remember, 
whatever beauty there is in this world will be maintained by those of us who care. And those of us who care will be those of us who love. And so if I have one message to you this evening in this very short address, is to bring more love, more love to conservation, more love to the conservation and preservation of wildlife, and more love to this way of life that we cherish in the outdoors. Thank you very much.